Right here on LA Talk Radio. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Jared Zavostowski, and you're listening to and watching Modern Mail Radio. This is all the stuff your mama should have told you and the stuff your daddy never knew. And joining me tonight, as always, my co host, Sarah Chapman. Hi, if my name was Jared Zavostowski, I might be hosting this shit. Just kidding. Yeah, no, at some point we are cool. going to change the intro to, to include Sarah. She's been here long enough. I think she's paid her dues. Oh, so. I paid my dues. Yeah, we're going to get it. you We're gonna get you a little, because they're redoing the website. Finally, uh, we actually get the website redone so it doesn't look um, the way it looks. And mm-hmm. we're going to get Sarah's picture on that, on that so, uh, you know, I can actually start getting some, um, some male listeners. And, uh, Hi, and guys. then Hi. we're going to put Sarah, you know, uh, in the theme song so we can hear that, that deep, dark, throaty, throaty voice Whoa. just be like, Welcome to Modern Mail Radio. Deep, dark, and throaty. That sounds like the last show. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, that, that show. Um, I have to apologize for our, uh, to our listeners and viewers out there. Um, Respectable moder- of you. Modern Mail Radio usually, I mean, sometimes we, we sway a little bit. There's definitely some swerves in the road. I mean, we've hit some potholes. There were butt plugs. But we, uh, we ran into a wall on that show. I, I, it's still a funny show. I love it. You know, I, and thanks for our guests for being on the show. It was great. Uh, but, you know, Modern Mail Radio, definitely, we, we follow a very, very uh, core rhetoric here. and We're we, going to redeem it tonight. Yeah, we're, we're going to redeem it tonight. So we actually brought, uh, well, you can, you can intro the guest. I'd love to intro Go for it. Go for it. Comedian and self-help guru, Kyle Sees. Oh, Jesus. That's what you Did call I me? Did I get it? I don't know. I mean, I was just kind of driving here in the car, and <laughs> that's what we came guru? That's what we well, came what up is, with. What is it? What is it? Co- uh, self-help God, comedian? Oh, God. God. I am so not a guru. Um, trans- Blame him. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll tell you the difference in a bit. But, the, uh, you know, I've, I've, I'd say transformational speaker and, and stand-up comic. Transformational speaker and stand-up comic, Kyle Cease. All of the subgenre, like slash, slash, author slash. Too. And, and wait, an author. An author. And author. An actor. And, and what if actor. I just kept going? Just, just keep going. Slash, I got slash, it. slash. It's like a steel trap. That. We'll do it. CrossFit. <laughs> plur- <laughs> It's but actually I mean, it's, it's my fault. I didn't that's ask that's first, it's so. the LA way. I mean, everybody's got a slash slash slash. And 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 hopefully I get this one right. Relationship expert Tiffany Smith. Yay! What if you said like Good. you go and relationship expert slash murderer? And right? like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys getting like, her credit? Butchered the name. Your name is thankfully very easy. So yeah. thank you for that. Not, not the spelling though. Oh no, <laughs> the spelling's quite difficult. How can you misspell Smith? Well, the first name. Oh okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's an it's an interesting spelling, but I got it right up the, up on the screen. It should be up there, right yeah. above your head. Yeah. What is Somewhere. this? Get off me. Subscribe. Um, <laughs> cool. So, uh, Tiffany, you went to you went to Brown University, right? <laughs> you said it there for a minute. You okay. went to <laughs> well, I was I was like, should I should I say it or should yeah, I let her no, say no, it? No, no, that's fine. I had a, I had a little lapse in in, <laughs> in judgment there. I, you know, sometimes I do that. People think that I'm stupid because I walk up and I'm like, hey, 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 and I'm like. It just dawned on me that there was a smarter way to do it, and I'm already in motion. Like, I'm already about to say the thing, and I'm like, oh, you should have said it that way. And I'm like, eh, eh, eh. And I'm, you know, trying to break, kind of skitter off to the side. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you're a relationship expert. Explain that. Yes, I went to Brown University, mm-hmm. um, and I studied sex therapy, psychology, and all of that. Um, and I actually worked for a company Um counseling couples and if they wanted to try new things or new things what kind of <laughs> things <laughs> maybe the things on the last show yeah probably, probably yes I actually know. i had to i didn't <laughs> see the last show but i wanted Two to people on one. yeah now everybody's gonna go watch the last yeah, show you're welcome on that one too. even though What's i didn't that? promote I it to see that one too actually you did I, no i said i want to yeah <laughs> i'm curious it's it's epically that <laughs> that sorry mom that's it sorry mom don't be sorry no own, no, own it yeah. <laughs> no, I do own it. I think it was great. Yeah, uh, it, it was just we 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 veered all, a little off, and I can I feel like little, there are a lot of fans bit, that are going to be mad at, at some point about that show. No, or this is reduction what if the right next here? show is you guys shows. pointing out this one? Like that? What if every you know what? episode is you guys talking about what? You're you're yeah, what a horrible show the last one yeah. was. You're just gonna have to tune in. Find you're like, out. They shouldn't have brought up the one before. Like every episode so is just you. That'd be great. <laughs> and that, yeah, it make people watch watch more hey, of the shows. Hey, thanks Living the way most people live, where they're just always fixing yesterday when it was never broken in the first place so explain that that one was broken <laughs> sorry that one was broken 
Because you've got so you so I, I watched some of your videos. I've seen you on YouTube, and it was it was very serendipitous that you're even on the show tonight. Because I actually called up uh, Brian Reeves. Shout out to Brian Reeves. He's an amazing uh, dating and uh, dating expert man coach. Uh, he he does male awesome. male transformational coaching. We've had him on the show in the very very beginning of the, of the video part of the show. And uh, you two were our very close friends. Mm -hmm. And I saw your video on I saw your video on Facebook, and like I, I sent you an email. I was like, I got to get this guy on the show. And then I invited Brian to do this show, and he wasn't available. And I I forget, but like I don't I don't know how in the world I put two and two together because my memory sucks. Like yeah. my memory is like I walk into a room and forget why I'm there. And <laughs> I ended up like this just is what he tells Kyle girls on sees the first Kyle date. sees why <laughs> does that sound so familiar? And it turns out that like. Brian was trying to already get you on the show last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was like, dude, oh, you got to get my roommate. Yeah, you got to get my this roommate. This is familiar. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he probably told you about me. See? That's what's up. That's yeah, what's up. <laughs> we apologize for last year when he didn't tell me. Yeah. I'm trying to do the theme of... I'm sorry about that. Sorry about the other... Sh sorry about the first few minutes. Well, you know, Brian might have been a little rattled because we definitely harassed him about his bright yellow parka that he wore. or uh, He wore this fleece sweater on the show. And we definitely harassed him a little bit about it because uh, it's, you know, it's modern male radio. It wasn't modern enough. It was like Paddington Bear or something. A little. Know? Yeah. Paddington Bear? It was close. Okay. It was very close. It was. Yeah. <laughs> that because Brian, you know, Brian and I, when we talk, it's so profound. Like it really is so fun. And, and we always dig into what our truth is and what the thing is. And I just love the idea of him coming in here ready to go. And you're like, yellow coat? And it's just like, yeah, yeah, it's Going yellow. to Seattle. Anyway, here's exactly. how to survive in your soul. And you're like, yeah, but it's a fun parka. <laughs> it's like, right. We didn't mention it on the show. I make a, I make oh, a, oh, I a, thought it was the air, on the air. No, no, no. I mentioned it. I, I, I said, my mom sent a, uh, my mom actually was the one who mentioned it. She's the one, she sent hi, me. Hi, Jared's a, mom. Hi, mom. Uh, she sent me a text during the show and she was like, oh my God, that guy's yellow, yellow, uh, jacket or whatever she was like tell him never to wear that again <laughs> yeah that's my mom i don't uh, know how long she waves so i'm just keeping my just, waving yeah. Yeah. just keep waving just All keep waving show long. Hello. so what i mean so this is a show nice on dating self-development uh male personal edification and i want to i'm really really curious what you guys would have to weigh in on that like what do you think are the biggest problems in society right now with males and what would you yeah go go come on i mean you want me to start yeah, go first. <laughs> well i'll tell you one thing i think that's interesting is that that we're first of all we're always trying to fix on the level of like what we're saying is male or female or dating or not or father like how do i be a better husband or father or you know christian or atheist or whatever and I think already we're, we're getting labels in that we don't need. Like the, the, the biggest thing we need to do is connect to ourselves. And I know that mm. sounds like a really vague thing, but it really is a real thing. And, and to give you an example, like I've discovered for myself that every time I'm about to do something, if it feels heavy, like in other words, we, we're used to living in a world where we just do things that feel heavy because we think we need to, like uh, staying in a job we hate to, because it, well, it pays the bills. Or so like going to. to the gym and lifting weights. Or staying there in a we go. That feels heavy. I'm giving, it, I'm giving it just, you know, But what I mean box. is like when you stay in a relationship, you don't want to be in, exactly. hold on to it. We only hold on to those things because our mind, when we're gonna let go of it, can only measure what you will lose, but it can never measure what you will gain. Mm -hmm. So our mind tricks us every time, like you're about to get out of a bad relationship, for instance, and your mind is sad because it's focused on the loss of one person versus the gain of seven billion people if you're bisexual and willing to date anybody. <laughs> and, and almost everybody is holding on to this thing. And what they don't understand is there was literally a feeling, like I believe we have two voices in us. There's a first voice that goes, we should leave this company. And it feels good. Mm -hmm. And that feeling is a preview. It's going, when you do this, you'll always feel this. But then there's a second voice that we learn from society about why we can't. So the, and it'll give you the stupidest reason and for some reason we listen to it. Like the first voice will go, we should leave this company. And the second voice that's just here, you don't feel it here, you feel it here. It goes, yeah, but if we do, we can't go to the Cheesecake Factory party next Thursday. Right. But the yeah. first voice can't tell you this, but it's like, if you'd learn to listen to me, you'll own all the Cheesecake Factories in a month and if you want, you can make them vegan, whatever you want to do. Because the first voice is always right. And, and what I've discovered is for me, when I listen to that first voice, that the feeling voice, mm -hmm. that every single ounce of my life changes. I have my career, my, my happiness, my relationships with myself and other people, 
my income, everything has massively shifted just based on, because when you want to do something and you don't do it, you're actually living in an argument with yourself. And we live in a society that that's just the norm, and that's the only way to get us to buy stuff that we don't need. In other words, alcohol puts you in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're buzzed and you feel this that's thing, true. you get in the moment. He so, looks at yeah. the table, who's got alcohol? Yeah. I do, I, Red Bull, But right addictions here. get you in the so moment, jealous. and you're only, you only need to get in the moment because you're so busy living in the past and future because you're suffering, but if you comprehended that you just are the moment, that, yeah. that those are things would actually contrast you. That's really interesting. And contract you, I mean, yeah, so. So the first voice is very liberated, and the second voice is very despairing. It's, it's very, and you know. I'm gonna quit my job, and then it's like, no, I'm gonna be jobless. And you know what's really weird in this society is when I say that too, everyone gets caught in the labels again, and they go, well, that's God, or it's the universe, or it's your instinct. You should be able to hear that whether you're Christian, atheist, whatever mm. you are, and understand it. You are in your head when you're arguing over what it is, versus just connect to the damn thing. Right. Yeah. And go back to your childlike state of just absolutely playing and creating. That's why people like booze, because it gives you, it makes you a child again. Right. Yeah. And it puts you in the moment. So basically what you're saying is that alcohol brings you closer to <laughs> to god, <laughs> to god. <laughs> <laughs> true self no that's but <laughs> But, but we're on, my bigger point That's is funny. that you have an addiction because you're, you're living in a denial of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And that pain is so bad that you need something to balance yourself out. But if you did the thing you just freaking wanted to do, you wouldn't have to have the addiction. Yeah. Or sublimation or whatever you want to put a label on that. Put that in the box. And, right. You know. uh, it's, and it's surreal to me to watch this world of people that don't remember that when you were kids, all we did was play. We weren't caring what our ex was doing. We weren't, you know, trying to figure out all the stuff. We weren't, you know, scrolling through Facebook wondering who likes us and thinking that matters. You're just playing, and then society turns you into a consumer. Six-year-olds today news, are screwed for that. News, well, yeah, the news scares the crap out of you, and then they run Prozac commercials. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how not scared of flying we would be if they showed us the 30,000 flights a day that made it? Yeah. <laughs> like, if every single time a plane lands, they interrupted whatever crappy show you're watching and interviewed every person as they're getting off the plane, you'd be like, I think oh. I want to try flying yeah. and they're like coming up a family that wasn't yeah. murdered Perfect. like you'd be like oh even murderers would be like well if no one else is killing people why should i i should fix the economy but yeah. they, they <laughs> don't do that we're so fear-based because it's the norm to live in fear okay. because we they there's there's a lot of money to be made and us not knowing how unbelievable we actually are. Yes. And what I do is I live right on the edge of that. And I've gotten to have two number one Comedy Central specials and then at the height of my career, completely leave it and do this thing that hasn't really been done the way that I'm doing it. And it's becoming so massive and expansive, but it's a byproduct of my connection to myself. It's not like I'm, I'm doing that out there. It's like I'm going, okay, what do I feel like doing and listening to it? And then there's always this thing where I'm feeling fulfilled. Which says a lot about how we feel and what we're doing because we're, we've got this comedy project that we're working on and it's really, I mean, it, it, it goes over the line. It races the line. We, we like the line on fire. Is there a line? Uh, I don't know. That's, That's sure. the best question. The best thing People always do. go, I think, out of the box. I'm like, why have a box? Exactly. The only mm -hmm. line yeah, that I see. Yeah, what is the box? Yeah. Seriously, though, the box, only line right. that I see in our comedy project is the one that I'm continually chopping on premiere. Yeah. Continually <laughs> making the line, editing this yeah. comedy project. Other than that, there are no lines. There are no boundaries. Yeah. It's whatever we create. And it, when you create it, if you ask yourself, what would be funny to me versus what will sell? Yeah. That's what I always question yeah. back and forth. Mm -hmm. The him, big mistake myself. everyone goes is what will sell so they stay safe. Yeah. But like Family Guy has those moments where like, what if Peter fights a chicken for exactly. five minutes? Yeah, exactly. And then your mind goes, you can't do that. That means right. you have to. You exactly. have an original, amazing, out of the I, bounds. I found I myself at first feeling though, yeah. like I was compromising <laughs> and sacrificing. But then now it's like, no, you just have to throw all that out. Because yeah. That is the box right there in and of itself. And it was very strange because it broke the rhetoric of what I was doing with Modern Mail Radio. I mean, we've been doing this show for a year. It's been very, 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 and slowly but surely it's kind of widened up. And then you're right, you know, with that, where you start to feel it. And when we, we did Match Talk Comedy, uh, we, we kind of sat down and it was just like, it was like blood was put in the water and all of a sudden we're, we're like, oh my God, I love this. I love this. I can't, I, I, I have to yeah. break out of this. I have to do this. And uh, Sarah could, could actually bear witness to this because in the beginning, we're right when we started doing that, I loved it so much and I wanted, uh, I felt that pull. And then I felt that exact thing, and I was like, well, you can't leave this, this radio show behind. You can't, you know, and I, I sat there for like a month and tried to figure out how I could individually brand all these different things that I was trying to do and how they right. would work. And finally, it was just like, fuck it. And I just, I, we went, we, we couldn't help it. So it's yeah. interesting because I just experienced what you're talking about. Yeah, and when the second, you know, the second you, okay, so here's a, here's a great example of an experience that I went through that has changed everything, okay? Mm -hmm. 
So last uh, February, we were doing these events where I do these two-day immersive events called Evolving Out Loud, where I show up and I speak for 10 hours a day, and I have nothing planned at all. Okay. How much water do you have to drink to speak for 10 hours a day? It actually, it's, it's, it's 72 <laughs> ounces per, I'm just kidding. You actually <laughs> <laughs> Every 30 seconds, just take a sip. But what's funny is people go, how do you do that? And I go, the same me that is you that shows up in a restaurant and you don't have a set list. If you had a, if you had planned out your conversation when you go to a restaurant with your friend, it would be really hard. Mm -hmm. But instead, you just start and you start talking and you stay in the room and content will show up. Agreed. But most people are yeah. busy trying to plan and make it good yes. so that people will like you exactly. because we've moved to a position mm. of thinking who we are is what people like think of us versus what we love and what we think of them. Or what's and expected of, of us because right. we went through this structurally with our project. Yeah. We have to have a script. We have to have That's these guidelines. But you we don't. Have, no, we the don't. The best things I've ever shot ever were like, it feels good shooting. It That's now. what we've been doing. We'll figure out the how while we shoot it. We're yeah. doing a sketch right now where I'm I'm a life coach for ghosts. <laughs> so damn that. funny. And my team is the, out of nowhere figuring out how to do green screen and CGI That's ghosts hilarious. into these shots. And they're, it's looking like an HBO crew made this thing. And it'll wow. be out in two days. And it's so funny and it's so good. <laughs> yeah, congrats. But we just said, what if we did that? We were sitting in a restaurant. We said, what if we did that? And we ran home and shot it. Yeah. And it, it you can't make anything this good with planning. It's, yeah, we did the exact same feeling. thing. Just like uh, I didn't plan this microphone not being screwed. Yeah, right. Tight. It's like down here. With uh, <laughs> when we did Match Talk Comedy, we did it in two weeks. We were pretty inebriated, and uh, yeah, it just it just came out. It was As like well, let's be. just shoot, Great. and we shot and edited it together, and yeah. what what came out of it was uh, it, it's been very very well received by anybody who's gotten to see it. Um, you move by your excitement. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about all this, Tiffany? I completely agree with him, but. I also, I think like um, people aren't honest with who, what they want, mm. and and that's with that's the problem with relationships. Where exactly, if you just concentrate on what you actually want in a relationship instead of going for what society wants you to have or your family or, or what you think, think the other person wants, exactly. And I think it'd be more happier, less divorce more like good relationships, um, but p people are more focused on other things like, oh, does he have money with the girls? Or right. like, instead of like, oh, another girl, like, oh, does he have a big penis? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like the, if, the if that's what yes. you really want, <laughs> if that's what you want, then <laughs> get do. that. Don't like settle right. for a guy. Hi, Tyrone. <laughs> It's a huge dip. Yeah. Is it? Just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Has it? Good to know. Has it taken lives? <laughs> Yo, my penis is actually taking uh, lives. There it, there it is. There's Tyrone. Yeah. That's, that's a tagline. That's one of our lines from the uh, from from this the skit, the, the the show that we're doing. I've yeah. come up with an analogy, by the way. I just want to say because I know I've I've had girlfriends in the past say they wanted to know what it's like to have one. Mm -hmm. And Hi. this is Hi. this is the best analogy ever. If you've ever had a hair dryer and you're in a hotel. If you've ever like you don't those know, are terrible. Well, hold on. You know when you you when you're holding the hair dryer but you can't find the outlet on the wall. Yes. Imagine if you were stuck holding that hair dryer 24 hours a day and you could never find the outlet. That's the answer to your question. What's it like to have a dick? Because we're stuck with the thing. If we could do that, <laughs> we would leave you alone in bars. Okay. But, okay. All right. Yeah. I'm trying to. I, I, that one lost that me. One I don't, I, yeah. I'm like, I'm wait like, a minute. What hmm. do you mean? Have you ever had it where you have? Is it a, a Conair? Is it a 1600 yeah. and 1875? What am I working so with here? I'll find the outlet. Because if you've ever been in a hotel and okay. you have a hair dryer, okay, and you're st and you you're trying to find the outlet, okay, to plug it into. Oh, so you're just constantly looking for vagina. Is right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And for, I was like, wait a minute. What yeah. And for married guys, the equivalent <laughs> would be having 50 plugs around you all the time that you're never allowed to use at all. And then mm. see, I don't like when people say that about yeah. like. Marriage or relation, I think that scares it's an old people. Comedy bit of mine. Off of like the old ball, ball and chain, or like, yeah. oh, um, I'm on lockdown. I hate when people do that with relationships because if you're not in a happy relationship, then get out of it. Bye, like, Felicia. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Time to move like, on. If you feel like someone's a ball and chain or wait, then that's not a good relationship. Yeah, and a lot of those gym. relationships start that. on yeah. a, on a on a bad premise. You yeah. know, the guy realizes that he or he thinks that he can never be something or you know he can never be greater in himself so he never puts any work in there he puts all his work in his professional life and then women think oh well that's security yeah. so and then they end up in this messed up relationship and it's like well the premises that you got into the relationship were were, were messed up anyways you just know, I, well, go for it i just want to say based on what you said too 
I, I think that one premise that is obviously the truth and is never ever exercised is that I really believe that love is here to liberate people. Yeah. It's not here to bind and say, I love you, here's all the things you can't do. Exactly. And Let's so many that. people, they made movies and here's these the things list, where Anna. they say, you com when a movie says you complete me, you're saying I'm incomplete without this person. I right. wrote something, right. a really good thing on right. that. like. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> Never mind. And I, I just believe so much that when you love someone, you want them happy no matter what route they need to get there. And I believe that exactly. so much there's a part of me that's going, I'm just going to be a space of love for whoever the person is, and I know there will be a person that can match that. I think mm -hmm. he but read my OkCupid okay account. <laughs> you know, it's he's possible. Literally, oh, yeah, you look, he's we've been literally winking just But way to make conditions on love to say that you complete me, so there it is. Right. Without it you, I'm complete. incomplete. Well, that's and just the norm in our society. You but don't complete me because I can live without you well how do you how do you end up yelling at someone that you supposedly love all the time like so true. much of domestic violence and, and all the stuff is shut up no. people <laughs> yelling at people oh well we love each other so we fight love. until the cops yeah, come no, that, that makes so sense that's only control yeah. but it's the norm in our society so we've been you know imprinted that we have to, to be, be in this exactly. thing because if you're gonna have a one-night stand with someone the cops don't show up usually because you're having fun but if you right. love someone you know nine out of ten yeah. times I just don't oh the cops came because you guys had a huge fight, a huge blowout. Yeah. No, and I that's think not. That's when not. people are looking for like, oh, someone to complete them instead of completing themselves, and that's why I say, people are like relationships are 50 50 I'm like, no, it's a hundred, a hundred. You bring a hundred of you, I bring a hundred of me, yeah. and mm -hmm. you live your life, I live my life, but we come together and enjoy each other. It's not like, oh, I have to hang out with the girlfriend or I have to hang out with the boyfriend. You don't want that burden on there. So. Right. But the, 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 and the thing with that is then you almost don't want one if you're trying to get one exactly because <laughs> because you're saying that'll complete me and you're moving from the level of I will be fulfilled by you if you think that person is what makes you happy you are now you're dependent on them so you're gonna do everything you can I to make agree. sure they don't go cheat they don't yep. you know go have lunch with that other person you're you're going to hold on to them way too tight because you think they are your God your source of but happiness, that's not how you heir. hold on to someone to right. hold on to someone in that nature would be just be your complete best self to where if they did have that lunch with that person, guess what? You're fucking up because guess I'm a 10 yeah. in yeah. every category. When I say 10, not just like looks wise, like in every little yeah. graduated cylinder, it's like, oh, I'm a great catch because of this, this, that, and other thing. Not just like, oh, I look good. Mm -hmm. Most girls do that here in LA. They think like, oh, they could be, just because they look good, they deserve like, a guy that's a 10 in every way and vice versa too. Guys do it too where they're like, oh, I'm a shitty, I have no patience. I don't have like this and this, but I deserve a girl that's a 10. She has to be patient with me. She has to do, and it's like, no, you don't deserve that. Go work on the other cylinders that you're missing. And, and then guess what? You'll attract you'll that attract. too. You'll attract mm. Because yeah. why do you think you deserve a 10 if you're a five? <laughs> like, yeah. the, higher, the higher the alignment that you connect with yourself too, the more you can spot someone that is either a people pleaser or says that you complete me or thinks, it, and it's just so annoying and it feels like a burden yeah, right away. Definitely. So if you're coming out being something to get someone, you the people pleaser really can only attract the polarity of that, which is takers. Yes. You know, if you're in your alignment and someone comes up to you and they're like, huh, do you want to hang out? You're not going to want to hang with them. And but you two, you're see. already selling yourself short. You're already taking from yourself, so you're going to attract the taker. Right. By and having that mentality. So, right. And and when you're coming and doing this thing like, do you like me? You're coming from fear. People that are in a place where they're, if you close your heart off, like I really believe there's a thing here where you're in the moment, you are you have your heart open. People are scared to do that because they're trying to protect themselves, but mm. they don't understand. An open heart is so much more protective of you than a closed heart. Completely because if you agree. go like this, you'll just also align up with someone else whose heart yeah, is also yeah, closed yeah, off. Absolutely. And so if your heart's wide open, you can sense everyone who's full of crap and you just immediately don't accept them into your life. And you go- My whole mantra, I, write, I try to write in everything that I like post and, because I give some advice, but it's grow better, not bitter. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people in relationships and like, whether it's not even just relationship, but like life stuff, if something negative happens, like he said, it gets, you get all closed off and you become like a bitter person to where you're like, oh, that happened last time. So I hate you, I hate all men or I hate all women. It's like, no. Um, Find out what you did wrong in the situation yeah. as well. And I fix it. Exactly. I tend to do that yeah. when I leave a relationship. Um, obviously, at first, I'm like, it's all your fault. <laughs> like, <laughs> but then I take myself out, and it's like, okay, look at it as a third person. 
hover with above no, it. Exactly. Hey, with objective. no judgment to where you're like, okay, what did I do wrong? Why did he cheat on me? Or why? What did I do to cause that? I think it's like, really hard mm-hmm. for people to understand the difference between love and attachment. I mean, That's true. attraction, we can talk about that all day long. Yeah. Attra- if you're either attracted or not, but love and attachment is a... Yeah. Well, another thing you were saying, like, figure out what I did wrong. I mean, that's kind of subjective because at the same time, you can stand out. And I, I, I do this. You know, I stand out and be like, what did I do wrong? Where did I? But then you're also, uh, you know, there's, a, there's another person in the equation. And what you did may or may not be wrong. It just may be wrong for that person. Exactly. Um, yeah. So then it goes back to what Kyle's saying where it's like, don't worry about that other person. Just but do you to exa- the best of your ability. It goes to what I was yeah. saying, too, mm-hmm. though, to where... If, even if you say, oh, um, what did I do wrong? If, even if it's wrong for that person, now you know the red flags sure. for that to yeah. where now instead of gr- doing that and closing yourself off, like he mm-hmm. said, you fix yourself. you like, okay, next time I'm... And I'm or was that like, even exactly. wrong? Was that person even wrong? Do you even feel like you were in the wrong just because it didn't work out with that person? And who's to it say that person cheating yeah. on you wasn't the right thing that was supposed to exactly. happen too? Exactly. Like maybe the other thing is that that was like clear leverage for you to go, okay, what in me do I want to become even more? What kind of alignment do I want? Yeah. What did this person want to leave from? What like is this is going to sound weird too but in some ways and i don't mean it like as an excuse but it's okay. fascinating to me cheating can be a thing in a world that just makes ownership like you did that to me yeah. what people decide to do has nothing to do with you and i believe that if you truly 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 go to a place of love you will find some th- you might have a ton of people that hate you and cheat on you all the way up there but they weren't supposed to be with you sure okay. and you'll more and more just find someone that aligns with you now if they cheat on you with your twin you can be a little pissy for a little and bit. If oh, you, yeah, right. but if <laughs> yeah, you desire to be out there and and having sex with multiple you people you might attract nervous. somebody who is like that as well yes. and that's where you get those those Which couples also is fine so? mm-hmm. yes. You know, yeah. like if you want that, there's going to be people that have that too. I've See, met- that's what I say though. If that's what you're looking for, just be honest. I think that, that was yeah. another thing I was going to say too. Just be honest about mm-hmm. like what you want and who you want. Yeah, that. because why is that bad? Because there's this box that exactly. says we only have to be with one person and we can't find multiple yeah. lovers and have someone that's okay with that. I have a friend who's got a great relationship and that's what makes it work. Yeah. Mm. work because both of them are okay with multiple lovers. Yeah. I've had in the time many times where I've wanted to... I'm, I'm always about, I, I unveil all of my truth immediately with every Could relationship. You. And I was a comic on the road, so I have a crazy past in my 20s, you know, and, and just lived city to city. And I talk about it. And anyone that can't handle it, that's, that, I, that's fine. But You I throw just, out your 52 you, cards, and if they can't pick them up, then... And if you don't... And bye. this is with everything. Like, I mean, just even people like, you know, Martin Luther King and, and the greatest in the world, <laughs> their truth is their best friend. Not my, I will repress my truth to make you happy first because now you're more important than my freaking truth but if you live in your truth you will have people that you thought were your friends start to clear out oh yeah you realize they were not time. supposed to be in a relation and your truth is like this elevator where you just keep going up while people show up and you realize they're phony they're phony and then eventually you have a real relationship f- with friends with relationships with dating with everything mm-hmm. because you're in your truth they're in their truth and you're loved all the way to your core versus just connecting on what some sports team but does. when you own your <laughs> truth too it's like you don't you no one can tell you anything about you and you get upset like if you own it and you're growing to yes. be better like no one could ever like they could say to you oh well you're fat like yeah i know i'm working on it i need a shirt that just says like <laughs> na and i don't mean but, narcotics anonymous yeah. just like non-applicable <laughs> But yeah. Like, yeah. And slash, you know. And, but if you're yeah. a projector, someone reads you and you just go off the hinge like right. fuck you. Da, da, da. Those are projectors and owners. And so Reactors. I tend to own. Yeah, <laughs> I tend to own my truth too. So you can tell me whatever you want to tell me about myself. I'm like mm-hmm. and whatever. <laughs> Thank you're you. Awesome. I love this. This <laughs> is a fun talk because. <laughs> Because Besties. we only give, <laughs> we only give a crap. Like what you're saying is like we only care. Uh, what we don't like about other people is something we don't like about ourselves all mm-hmm. the time. I do this thing at my events where I say, "Tell me something that you really piss like triggers you and pisses you off." And 50 people will yell when they're late, when they don't make sense, when they're gibberishy, when they whatever. No one says murderer. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because they don't know what it's like to murder someone. Hopefully. And when Tiger Woods cheated and, and, you know, all these people, celebrities cheat, 
all of America goes batshit, and then they have CNN have a correspondence <laughs> discussion because they have been thinking about it, it happened to them, they did it to someone, whatever. Yeah. But meanwhile, there's starvation issues all over the world, and we don't have the panels on CNN discussing that because yeah. a lot of America doesn't know what it's like to be starving. In yeah. fact, they know what it's like to be full. I don't think hmm. they can. Yeah, if that's interesting. Were, we just want to know what golf club was used to hit that windshield and break it. Was it a nine? Was it a seven? What yeah. did they use? What did they select? Like. <laughs> So what petty. Did the say? Seriously, so well, petty. Well, and it's interesting because uh, you know when you start getting into the new uh, the new thought movement, you know, all this attraction and stuff. When I was younger, uh, it's intimidating. Uh, in the very very beginning, like you know, you're attracted to it. And I, we, we talked briefly about the secret and kind of how that was like a training wheels thing. Um, and you know, it, it's funny because when you see people uh, who are in that you know elevated mindset and they're in alignment and they're moving forward, there's a, a very you're either drawn towards them or repelled away from them. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's a magnetic quality. It's like there's, there's no middle ground. It's positive or negative. Uh, well, if someone's and not in a negative you, way. If someone's telling you who you are is just this moment, I believe 100% that I'm not my past at all. And I have a lot of great accomplishments. I'm proud of from them. It has nothing to do with who I am. If you think who you are is your past, then when you, if you're someone who makes 40000 a year, you will see it as impossible to make a million dollars a year, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's too big of a jump. If you get your just this moment, you're all possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to become embodying that. And when you, when you talk about this stuff, it can be a total threat to some people because there are people who who they are is I got the four touchdowns in high school. I've created this huge bank account. I'm this person's spouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a threat to them because mm -hmm. that's all they know. And this is why many uh, huge celebrities become suicidal and depressed and yeah. stuff because they think who I am is this external thing. Yeah. And then they think, is that all there is? And yeah. if you have a lot of abundance coming at you, sometime if you're the number one of the caterpillars, you're going to be horrified to go into the cocoon because you have to let go of the attachment to all that stuff before you become a butterfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why we lose child stars every week because they yeah. always associate themselves as They're who I am. Defining themselves by their the career that they that had show. that didn't work out and then yeah. there's nothing that they can move on to. Right. Because everyone knows them as the so and so child. on that show and exactly. it's it's so sad, but you it's know, true. It's crazy because this is a dating show. So I, I actually applies. started writing five books uh, and they were all going to come full circle. So it was Modern Male, Modern Female. I wrote one on uh, bipolar because that was something that I struggled with. And then I wrote uh, one called, uh, it was Methodology of the Mind. And we we're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff. Actually, Thor, one of my one of my good friends, I've had him on some of the uh, some of the past shows. He's got a set tonight at 11:30 at Avalon. Hi, oh, Thor. Oh, does he? Yes. Yeah, hi, Thor. He probably he won't um, be there because we're, ed we're editing. So no, he's not he's not no, 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 no. That's, that's his that's his real no name. Oh, wow. It's his real name, yeah. Thor. I'll be there with Captain America and Wolverine. I and E.T. Yeah, I don't know right? which are the Hawkeye. Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> he does but have like a superhero name. Yeah. We, uh, okay. we actually, so my, my first delve into this stuff uh, or into any sort of media was actually a little back and forth conversation that me and Thor had. And it was edited together. It's on my page somewhere. It's on my YouTube channel somewhere. Uh, but it, it was called Conversations on Life. And it was very, very much what you're talking about now, that shedding of that stuff, that, um, you know, the identifying factors throughout your life, like you, you know, and you think that's who you are. And it's not who you are. Right. Who you are is that little voice that's saying, go, go towards the light, go towards the fun, da 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 yeah. Because there, there's a part of you that's, and, and there's kind of an easy way to test this. Um, I, I'm sure we've all had that moment where you're doing something and you're in the moment and you're just killing it. Like you're, you're, you're so in the moment that you are, your your leaps and bounds, uh, uh, leaps and bounds of where you thought you you could be. Like you're doing stuff that you didn't even know you were capable of, okay. and then all of a sudden you become conscious of you. There's a little, there's that little thing that goes, oh wait, what am I doing right now? Right. And that's the story of your past. Yes. I also used to say that. I don't do this. You know, I used to say, no, used to say that too to people. This is bonding right now. <laughs> this, is, this is in the moment shit right here. <laughs> if this was but, a five hour show, it'd be so different. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> where, where would we even be? But, would be in, we'd be in Vegas by now, yeah. Yeah. maybe possibly. No, but I used to say that to people like, when you're a child and you go outside and play, like you were saying earlier, like my cousin and I, we used to do the craziest shit when we were like, playing we like we're into gymnastics so we'd get on the swing swing really high and backflip off of it and like land like like gymnastics Damn, okay. so we do like crazy things until people started talking in your ear like oh you can't do that you're gonna You'll break your neck you're, you're gonna, gonna break your neck and then it gets in your brain and you're like oh shit I could really hurt myself and one of the last time I tried to do it I like scraped my head on the ground and it's like wow. it was pretty bad but like until someone was like oh that's really hard or dangerous I didn't even second guess it. I just did it like that. So. I'm so glad I grew up with imaginary earplugs. I just heard nothing my parents <laughs> told me. Or I just, you know, selectively don't remember any of the rules or groundings or anything because I'm just on my own wavelength. 
Yeah, let's, and we could. Oh, go ahead. No, and we. I, I, I'll just drop that one. Hi, we'll, Mom. We'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go right into uh, what we were going to say. Well, I was going to say what's even more fascinating about that is what comes up in your head is just a thought. Yeah. And it's fear, and right? Yeah. It's fear yeah. most of the time. Well, yeah, but you know what fear is? Is when you create a it's thought. Bullshit. When you create a thought out of thin air. Yeah. Yes. And then you forget you created it. Exactly. Yes. So that's like drawing a picture of a monster and forgetting you drew it and then looking and at your like, wall <laughs> and freaking out all night. Oh my God. Like <laughs> what you just said was like a thought came up. Now, if you can get and prove to yourself that your thoughts are like passing clouds and you're the sky that you're just the space that these thoughts showed up in you will be totally free I this sounds corny but I wake up every morning and I sit and I close my eyes for an hour it's not meditating it's not you got to say om I just <laughs> sit and there's nothing that doesn't sit with its eyes closed that doesn't totally evolve Nelson Mandela went to prison 27 years became the president right so if you just sit and you allow what happens is all these thoughts show up and they go you know, God, I'm gonna do this 59 more minutes. <laughs> now who's talking? It's a thought that's basically taking your story of your past and it's saying this isn't true. Now, if you could just allow that thought to be there, our problem isn't the thought, it's the resistance to the thought. Sure, yeah. to so the, the reprogramming up, of that even being an inhibitor to our, you know, moving past that thought. Well, the, you're the space the thought's showing up in. So if the thought shows up and you just love it, it'll leave. If you go, what if I screw up? Cool. What if I, mm -hmm. what if they don't like me? Awesome. Yeah. What if I totally <laughs> screw up this first date? That'll be great. You suddenly free yourself from it. But if you go, mm -hmm. what if I screw up? Ugh, you just resisted your own thought, which is insanity. But that's what we've been, these thoughts have been put into us. And then we realize and believe that we're the thoughts. So we think who we are is this voice that says you can't do that. Right, exactly. And then we I'll believe it, resist ourselves. Set up and for that's failure, set up for failure. Set but up. if you could love the thoughts and allow the thoughts to just show up and you just be like cool with them, yes. they leave. But you have to actually grow to a place of becoming a space of love that's so yeah. big that the thoughts leave. That's and why that's how you have a good relationship. Okay, cool. Because if you do it with your thoughts. Rich! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? Amen to that. Hey! <laughs> but isn't, isn't that true, though, how some love people it. love rejection or they hate rejection, and the people who love rejection are the ones that are most likely to succeed because they can embrace that. Wall to wall, like, because ah, it's not the thought. Don't tell it's me no. It's not the rejection. It's your, re your, it's your resistance to it. Sure. I know a guy who says he has a game with his friend. They say, how many no's can we get a day? They ask out like a hundred people and go to different things. Like they're so successful. That's like oh, the wow. Stephen King story. <laughs> Almost you everybody the says King yes. Story? No. With his, like, he had a, a, a nail on his wall, and every rejection letter that he got, he just posted them until the nail was completely full to the as wall. As big Lush. as his books, nine hundred pages. Yeah. Wow, great interesting. <laughs> That's cool. So we're we're getting close. Uh, we got about ten more minutes. So do you guys have any closing thoughts? Any anything that you guys really wanted to get out that was like you know kind of burning burning up inside you, burgeoning? <laughs> They're, they're in the moment, so yeah, yeah. there they're, are no they're, burdens they're, right now. <laughs> There's only fun and love. No, I, it's called like burg, burg, burgeoning, burg, burgeoning. Burg, burgeoning. Burg, burgeoning. Burg, burgeoning. Burgeoning? Like what? over, burg, like <laughs> what the fuck is that word? Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a moment. Hey, okay, guys. <laughs> you get it's, it. it's actually my fault because we've been editing around the clock for the last. I don't know how long. It's been mm. three months straight. This so stuff's gonna if be any, funny. Any tongue ties going on over there? It's my fault. <laughs> Yeah, I just get to Whoa. watch. Sarah, Sarah, no, no, no. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, wait, did that sound bad? Yeah, that sounded know. really bad. Sorry. Wait, what? Episode but 62, I loved it. Now we're I was on okay 63. with it. I don't even I know what I said. I'll it. know it in a couple yeah. hours. Well, we'll we're, yeah, we're going to find this out tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just allowing all of it. It's just, I'm just like, okay, that's just supposed to happen. Just allow it. It's just happening. It's just happening over and over. Social media, let's talk about where we can find you guys and what you guys are working on next and that kind of stuff. Start with you, Kyle. Uh, me? Okay. Oh, you have more shit than I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, so we're doing these amazing events now, and they're called Evolving Out Loud. The last one we did was 1,400 people. We have another one coming up at the Alex Theater in Glendale at the end of January. It's hey, hey. already almost sold out, and we're about to do a uh, five-city tour, uh, New York, Chicago, Phoenix, Seattle. We're about to announce everything. We also have a ton of online stuff on how to let go of your fears, how to let go of your stuff. Um, I have a product called The Entrepreneurial Shift, which is a 21-day video series on how if you want to take your business through the roof by moving it from your head to your heart. Um, you can go to Facebook and see me. There's a Twitter account. I did movies, 10 Things I Hate About You, Not Another Teen Movie. Oh, and wow, I had okay. two Comedy Central specials. There's Love over it. 100 videos online. Just Kyle Cease, C-E-A-S-E. -E. Add me to your Facebook and... I respond to every email and go to evolvingoutloud.com if you want to get tickets to, to the every event. Email. Cool. Wait, what, what was the last emails. one? Go to what? If you want to. 
evolvingoutloud.com is where they can get tickets to the event. And it's two days completely well lived where you don't just sit there on your Facebook and scroll all day. You actually learn how to immerse yourself in your creativity, play, connect with other people in that same place. And so many lives have changed from this, from people letting go of what they aren't to make room for what they are supposed to become. Put down the frickin' phone. Go to that show. Cool. And what's the price point on that? Believe it or not, like we usually have them for 500 a ticket, but <laughs> mm -hmm. right now it's 99 bucks a ticket. Ooh, and you okay. also can get the video series of the last one with it. And every event is completely different because it's all in the moment. 99 so, bucks, change your life or join a gym, change your fucking life. Join yeah, you'll go to the gym anyway. It's like yeah, the inner gym. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the inner gym. The it's funny you say that because so many people think the way to change your like body is the method. Like we have... P90X no. and insanity, all these things, mm -hmm. yet people are getting fatter. I make always, fun of this constantly. So every time I say something that's fitness related, so it's like. Yeah, so, but those yeah. are just methods. Yeah. And we got to figure out what in us is blocking ourselves from working out and eating healthy versus yeah. like. Not even just that though. I feel like more people are more concerned about changing the outside and not the inside. Because right. it's, it's going like to make the inside different if you have the outside yeah. different. Yeah. It, doesn't I've, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I've mentioned it yeah. quite a bit that one of the first places that people go with self-development is the gym. Yeah. And kind of that, I, th I feel like, I don't feel like that's a mistake. But it's kind of like a. It, it's, it's a little it, last backwards. It's not. Well, you it's actually not even, can't lose weight that easily when you're against yourself. Yes. When you're not mm -hmm. liking yourself, your body's releasing cortisol. So if you're sitting here going, "I got to get fit so people will like me," you're saying, yeah. "I don't like myself." Yes. So you stress and release more fat. Ah, so yeah. mind over matter is very. I'm a huge believer Super in mind bad. over matter. You have to be in the right mindset to have the matter follow your mind. I think more people say counseling too, but but the mm. states have made it like it was. Like it's so taboo. Like, oh, you're talking to a shrink. <gasps> and it's like, no, yeah. go. Talk yeah, but to I mean, a lot of that's Freudian undirected therapy. So it's kind of like, oh yeah, just keep talking, and if you talk out your problem long enough, you'll figure it out on your own. Like, I think it's better than pills, though. Yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely, like, definitely. No I pills. Hate, like people, nope. I used to have a roommate that like. He thought he was chemically imbalanced by some therapist, and so he'd constantly take all these pills. And I tried to help him, but he just didn't want help. He was one of those people. Like, I think that the, it, it all stems from one. like yeah. right. We go right back to it. You know, find your truth and stuff, and really like confronting who you are, what what you what you want. And and I mean, when now. people get go into self development, they're like, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna get in shape, and it's a very cosmetic band aid. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in shape, and I'm gonna feel better. And then they do. You know, their endorphins, they start feeling better. Uh, but but Band-Aid, you hit the nail on the head. Band-Aid. Yeah, it's not going to... Uh, on uh, a it, gunshot wound. Yes. It might change a little bit. <laughs> you know, not. you start feeling better about yourself, and then it, it gives you an excuse to start being more confident, and that confident leads to what else can I conquer? What else can I achieve? What else can I accomplish? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's it's good, but like... You know, it, it to me, it's, it's a very low-level mindset to just stay in fitness and be... I'm a fitness fanatic and therefore my development is at its peak. And it's, it's not like, a permanent suture. It's, it's something that you, it, it's meant to be a platform. You know, you go from I'm unhappy to now I'm fit and in shape and now I have the ability to actually feel and go out there and do. And then you start working on, you know, the emotional stuff. I would even say that the emotional stuff is more important. Oh, um, definitely. I agree. Definitely. I've met people who were, they, they looked like they'd never touched a weight in their life, but they were happy and yep. they were making moves and they were getting whatever they wanted in they're their life. They were getting out there. They were making moves. DeAndre yeah, just it's... came out there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sing. I want to dance. Make I just want to get out there. I want to make my moves. <laughs> so me and Sarah have a comedy we, show. Yeah, that's for we, another. We that's play another. three different characters. And I actually had, so if you actually go back several shows, we actually uh, did an interview with we some did. of those characters. Scotty, DeAndre, and Jerome came out. But wait, Tiffany needs to announce. Yes, 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 yes. Right. So okay. let's let's get well, your. I'm just doing shoots now. Uh, basically, I model now too. Girl, no, <laughs> not just. You're doing shoots. You're doing shoots. Awesome. Oh, and, Matt. Um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, Tiffany underscore Smith, T Y F F A N E E, um, and you can find me on Facebook same way. So okay, that's about it. I don't do Twitter all that nonsense. I like try to keep it. But it was a great platform. <laughs> I, I, I didn't realize so. how, how great as a promotional platform it is. I am. Yeah. I'm not a big Twitter person not, myself. Uh, so. I think like, uh, oh, I'm pooping. And depending <laughs> on <what> comes <laughs> out, <laughs> right? tweet that. It's like, I'm Twittering. Just I'm wanted Twittering. to fill you guys in. Wouldn't it be weird <laughs> if that was like everyone's news feed? Yeah, like just, I, I, you just I'm look pooping. and the 25 of them. <gasps> Sorry, I just Twittered. <laughs> 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 I like that. That's good. Hello. All right, guys. Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Um, actually, you can you can find us at Methodology of the Modern Mail. You can find us at modernmailinc.com slash radio. You can find us on Instagram at modern.mail. You can find us on uh, Facebook at Jared Zavostowski, Modern Mail. I mean, like, just Google Modern just Mail. You'll find us. Just freaking Google that. 
Um, we're Google all me over too. No. Yeah. Google, Google, Google. yeah, Google and follow, guys. Come on. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe below for more awesome videos. Google and we are developing another channel. It's hilarious. It's going to be funny, guys. So cool. Uh, anything else, Sarah? Coming at you hot. Okay. It was fun. Right. What a good flowing talk. Was, we so had some good, flow right? there. Yeah. We're in the moment. Um, it's so nice when, because usually they're so pre programmed. I'm like, do you have any pets? Oh, yeah. 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 Hold on, let me read we're for my so, questions. Yeah, we're so unprogrammed. That's like we stopped doing questions. We stopped. I stopped. I wouldn't even talk to guests before the show. I'd literally be like, "Hey, hey, how are you?" And then I'd be like, "They'd be like, oh, hi." I'd be like, Dude. That's how Save I was it. tonight. They're probably it. like, "Who's this <laughs> bitch in the burgundy shirt and the slut boots?" But hi. Hey, I nobody can see your boots, Thank Sarah. You. It's okay, they're, they nobody will. cares about your boots. The boots are sexy. I care about them. Thank you. I was I was worried about them the whole time. Right? Nobody cares about the thoughts point out, but her boots. True. No, nobody cares about the boots with that skirt on. I like to throw people That's off true. from the outside in. So <laughs> this does not represent what's going on in here. What do you mean by that? All right. I got it backwards. I mean, so I have slut boots on and I'm not a slut. Thanks. Oh, there okay. You go. Yeah, well, I look like a whore too. Well, come on. I love where this <laughs> is <laughs> going. I love where this is going. <laughs> so, we saved it till the I, end, guys. I'm like the biggest prude ever. Save like, the best oh, for last. <laughs> no butt plugs involved. Okay, so Just yeah, kidding, I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Well, speaking of prude, I saw that that was funny because the picture that reminded me to, to book you oh, on the show no. was that breaking the internet photo of the two smiley faces. <laughs> and it's literally like I'm scrolling through my newsfeed. I'm like, who is the softcore okay. porn star on my is, Facebook? Where is this? I don't know what you're right. I posted where? a topless what? photo because it was really hot that day. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. But I put like um, little smileys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very. I put little smileys on my nipples. Those, so, look, those like, look fairly. So I'm just insulated. scrolling through, yeah. but like the way she cropped it and cut it out, it's like huge. It's yeah. massive. So I'm like, I'm coming through, and it's just like, bam. I and do I was that like, a lot too. Like I put winkies on my balls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Did you send me the unedited version yeah. of that one? Yeah. If you, my inbox was I just send you winkies. With... Wait, if your <laughs> penis is like the version. hotel hairdryer, what are your balls like? I get that a lot. I get that every Thursday. Okay. <laughs> Thursday is balls question day. Is we it? do it from 7 to 9 p.m. Oh, yeah. that's right now. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. 7 to I'm 9 waiting. p.m. I'm waiting. Balls I'm question waiting. day. The outlet's yeah. right here, so I'm waiting for the balls answer. And the number is somewhere down here, so you guys have questions about Kyle's balls, you can definitely call in right now. Yeah, we'll be taking your balls. What do they We'll be taking your balls. <laughs> we'll be taking your balls from seven to nine. We'll be oh, taking speaking the calls of, that's balls. a good little tip. A lot of guys don't think about this. Uh, your balls stink. You, I can only no, you, you can definitely, come out of You can right always now. spray a, just a little dab of cologne oh, in there. Put a little bit on your hair. There it is. No, no, no. Because as your body aerates throughout the day, it's gonna make your it's gonna make everything smell like you know it's good. People don't okay. forget that like. What yeah. if you, a spontaneous BJ was coming? But you it got smells cologne good. on your dick. Well, no, 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 you, you just put it in your taint. You yeah. just put it in your taint. Oh my god! What if she's wild? <laughs> and she licks her taint. <laughs> what if her start is taint and she just <laughs> goes, "I just am allergic to cologne. Here I go." And you're just like, "Wow, you shouldn't have said that because I'm gonna feel guilty while you do." Okay, this, spray it in your undies you. and not on your. Balls. Yeah, that could work too. That could work too. How about I mean, a six-inch rule? No matter where it goes, and I'm not talking about a dirty uh, one. Just you know, but from far away. It's like you say, Kyle, with that go with the flow. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Well, if she has an allergy to that, you know, maybe she was supposed to lick your taint so that she ends up in the. You are oh, so you guys have a story so about how you met her, yeah. to get to, to give it to your kids sure and she was really bad at giving head super bad <laughs> so. yeah yeah it's like a slow graze with a sandpaper tongue or you know what you know what you could just like not shave a small spot in your taint and just like that would be like the hairy you spot shave your so taint. naturally that's the part that she's not yeah of course this conversation happens you shave your taint. i i am very well groomed <laughs> that's awesome. this is modern <laughs> male radio <laughs> Who even grows hair there? <laughs> just, just, I just clean everything up. I clean everything up. Thanks for sharing. Uh, hairy one. Thanks for sharing. Hairy taint. I, d I don't even know what I have. Like, <laughs> Take off your pants. Uh, well, I, look at the time. It's so weird. Uh, yeah, look at that. Uh, look at that. that. Yeah. I'm having so much fun, but Kyle has to be out of here. I do have to be out of here. Okay, so uh, that's it for tonight, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, Modern Mail Radio. Oh, that went off. You're listening to Modern Mail Radio with Jared Zavistosky, right here on LA Talk Radio.